Today I will show you how to download and install the Subix agent on a Windows system. Add it into Subix for some monitoring. And then later on we will set up a dashboard with some graphs so we can see the data. Have you tried turning it off and on again? If we head over to subix.com slash download, on the right hand side we can see it says Subix agents. So this is the one we're going to use. Scroll down a bit. Make sure that you have Windows 64 bit. In my case, I'm using 7.0 LTS for my server version. So I'm going to match it here. We'll, we'll do some encryption. So open SSL. You can of course do no encryption if you want. And for packaging MSI. Scroll down and then we will see two types of agent the old legacy agent and the agent 2 which is written in the more advanced modern code and if you're not experience any problems i would suggest using the new agent the agent 2 so press download on that one we will open up the installer hit next accept the terms hit next here we can choose the different features the agent is yeah it's going to be the agent the sender and the get is not necessary those are some troubleshooting tools but uh, we can uh, have them for now there's no problem hit next and you will see the host name it's automatically going to fill in the host name of your system currently i'm on a windows server 2025 so it will fill in the host name i have on yeah this system for the Subix server, I will fill in the IP address. And for the listening port, this is the default port for Subix 10050 for the agents. Here we can fill in if you are using proxy servers. Maybe you have many different agents and proxy servers that collect all the data. And your main Subix server might be in the uh, headquarters of your company on another site. So then you will fill in maybe your local proxy servers and then the end destination of your subic server here in my case these are the same so i will fill in my ip address again we will enable psk because i'm going to show you how to do some encryption and the local path hit next here is where we fill in our pre-shared key so we will start with making up an identity so I will just go with my PSK ID. And for the pre-shared key, this is going to be a long string. You can generate it with some tools online. Uh, but I will just make up uh, some characters here. Make sure it's 0 to 9 and A to F because it's in a hexadecimal format. So I will start with some number ones. A, B, C. Like this. And I will save these ones because we are going to need them later on in the Subix frontend when we are adding this host. Hit next and then just hit install. It's not a large program so it doesn't take more time than this. Then we hit finish. Let's check that the agent is running. So we can go to services and here we can see Subix agent 2 it is running and it's starting automatically. I will copy this one into my clipboard and remember my PSK ID. Let's swap over to the Subix frontend. We are now at the Subix frontend when we are actually exactly where we left off in my latest video where I showed you how to add a firewall and a switch with both the agent and SNMP. So make sure to watch that if you're wondering how to do just that. I think we should start to swap to a dark mode because this is hurting my eyes. So we go to user settings profile theme and let's hit up the dark mode. Okay, this is much better for the eyes. 
Now we are going to add the machine that we installed the agent on. So we will go to data collection, hosts, then we go top right to create the host. The host name could be Windows Server 2025, just like my machine. The template we will hit select. And here we are going to choose Windows by Zabbix agent. For the host group, when we press select, we can see that we have some database host groups, discovered host, hypervisor, Linux servers, but there is no host group for Windows Server, so let's make that. And we can do that directly in here. So if we start to type Windows Servers, it's going to say new, so it will make us a new uh, host group. Then we are going to choose the type of monitoring and we will hit add. And this is going to be via the agent that we just installed. So hit agent, fill in the IP address of your server. My Windows server is on 1.104. You could use a DNS name instead. And here we can specify the port and it's going to be a default one. This is not going via any proxy, it's just this server and make sure it's enabled. We will not hit add yet, we are going to hit encryption. So here we can see if you choose no encryption when you downloaded the agent, you will choose no encryption. But we did PSK, so we're going to choose that one, PSK. And did we remember the PSK identity? It was my PSK ID. All right, there is the long string for the PSK and then we can hit add. Now it will take a while, maybe a minute before the availability goes green. Meanwhile, we can check the connectivity with, for example, netcat to netcat dash z, then the IP and then the port 1050. We can see that there was no problem connecting because yeah when we install the agent it also makes a firewall rule for the windows system so tcp is okay on the sub export 10050 towards the windows machine and if we refresh here we can see that we have green light on the availability now we can go to monitoring hosts and then click the windows server and go latest data. And here we can see we have a lot of different data to fetch from this system. So this looks very promising. Now let's do some fun stuff. Let's go to the dashboard. Here is the dashboard that we did last time. We have some problems, system info and the graph for the PFSense that we added last time. So if you want to know how to make a dashboard, you can watch the latest Sabix video. But for now, we are going to make use of the data that we have pulled from the Windows machine. So I will get rid of this system information. So go on the triple dots, hit delete. We can make a new widget just by dragging here. And we are going to use what is called top hosts. And this could be, for example, for all our Windows servers. Or host group, select the Windows Server host group that we did. And for the host, we are just going to have one host for now, but it might be more in the future, right? Then we are going to choose what columns are we going to monitor. And this is up to you. If you want to, for example, show the C colon, how much is utilized and the RAM, CPU maybe. But we're going to start with host name, so it will show the name. So we can just say hostname here, hit add. So this is going to be our first column. Then maybe we want to check the RAM. Going to be item value or item name. We press select, make sure it's Windows Server 2025 here or the device you want to monitor. And for RAM, we are going to choose memory utilization. I want it as indicator. 
0 to 100. This is the percentage. And we can make some thresholds to make it look good. We can go with 90. Add one more on maybe 75. And on that it's all cyan or blue or all good here. So this is how it should look if you want the look I'm having now. So here we can see there's the host name, here's the RAM, and we can see we are utilizing 81.79% now. Let's also add the disk. So I will go on the cog wheel and then you can just add more columns here under the columns field. So I will press add C disk. It's going to be an item value. Item name is going to be C space used in percentage. I will have this as indicator also. 0 to 100. And we will make the same thresholds here if I remember right what we used. And hit apply. So now we have a Windows server. We can see the RAM usage and we see the disk. So this is very handy information, of course. Let's also make a graph, but for the CPU. I'm going to delete the left graph here for the PFSense. So I'm going to hit triple dots, hit delete, drag a new widget. It's going to be graph. And for name, we can say CPU usage. Then we are going to go to the data set. So we will choose here. The host group is Windows Server. And here is the host I want to monitor. And then we will select what item, what we actually want to monitor. So I will press select again. And then I want to do the CPU utilization and hit select. You can change the color, the thickness of the graph. We press the color here. We can maybe we want some green instead. And I usually put it at 2, 3 for all this. I think it looks nice. And we go add. And now we can see the CPU usage for our server. This is also quite handy, of course. If you get the server stuck on a Windows update, it usually hovers around 50%. So we can do just that. We, let's swap over to the Windows server. Let's go to uh, Windows update. And let's just press install all here. And by that we should of course see the CPU go up a bit and the graph working. So let's head back to the Ubuntu and the Subix. By default it pulls every minute. And it doesn't matter if you put the graphs to... If we see, save here. If you put the graphs on a faster refresh interval, there's going to be some gaps and empty data here. You can tune that also, but I would keep it on one minute for now. And also here on the refresh interval to match for one minute. Now when the Windows update is running, it's going to make the CPU spike a bit. So I will wait a bit here, maybe fast forward so we can see the spike. And now we can see the spike. The poor Windows server is hard at work when doing the Windows update. But the graph looks a bit off. Uh, I don't think we can have 140% uh, CPU usage. So if we go on the cog wheel, then on the axis, as this is percent based, we will go with minimum percent zero and a maximum percent hundred. And then hit apply. The graph is going to look a bit more realistic. Okay guys, that was installing the Sabix agent and getting it into Sabix. And making some uh, nice graphs. Hope you guys liked the video and see you next time. Bye bye.